In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We begin our worship this morning singing the hymn, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of Creation. Welcome to All Saints Chiang Mai on this, which is the fifth Sunday after Trinity. It's good to see people from around the world joined together in worshipping God this morning. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Well, let's have gathered together, and as we come together, let's prepare for worship as we say the prayer of humble adoration to God. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, 
with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son Jesus Christ to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing again, glory to God in the highest. Glory be to God. this Sunday. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the Church is governed and sanctified, 
Hear our prayer which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth. To the glory of your name, through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And welcome to those on the Youth Charity Foundation who just joined us a little bit earlier, and to Father Rick, in, and I think some other people down in Bangkok, and for all those joining us from wherever you're coming. Welcome, and it's wonderful to see you. We'll now have our Old Testament, our Old Testament reading, which will be given to us by either Arthur or Phyllis. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah 55, verses 10 to 13. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. And the mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. be, Thanks to, be God. to God. And now Dan will give us our reading from the Psalms. Psalm 119. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. I have sworn and will fulfill it to keep your righteous judgments. I am troubled above all measure. Give me life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept the free will offering of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me your judgments. My soul is ever in your hands. My soul is ever in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, but I have not strayed from your commandments. Your testimonies have I claimed as my heritage forever, for they are the very joy of my heart. I have applied my heart to fulfill your statutes always, even to the end. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. 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 And now Arthur will give us our New Testament reading. All right. The New Testament reading today is from Romans chapter 8, verses 1 to 11. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies 
also through his spirit that dwells in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I'm going to ask the Youth Charity Foundation now if they have a song for us. Do you have a song for us this morning? Thank you so much. That was beautiful. That was wonderful. What we're going to do this morning, I'm going to ask the children to stay with us. And so then when we have um, the time for them, the video, which will be for them, we'll all watch it this morning so we can see what the children will have. Because actually the message is really the same for the children and it is for the rest of us. So we're all going to stay together for that part of our service this morning. But first we have the gospel reading. So I'll say to you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the lake. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen! A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some of the seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. And other seed fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depths of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. But other seed fell on good soil, and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. And Jesus explained the parable to his disciples. Hear then the parable of the sower. 
when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it. The evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is like what is sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, the person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the word, world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. What I'm going to do now is share the video I recorded earlier for the children. We'll watch it together and then we'll hear more of God's word as we go through. It was really great to see you all again last week. We have missed you joining our worship at All Saints. This week's Gospel reading is the famous Parable of the Sower. We will listen to that in Thai and then see a cartoon of the story. Stories of the Bible The Parable of the Farmer This is Jesus hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love. He healed many people from their sickness, performed many miracles like calming storms, and even raised people from the dead. One day, Jesus went and sat beside the sea. A great crowd gathered around him. Oh, hey, everyone. So he got in a boat and told them many things in parables. Okay, listen to this. He told them this story. A farmer went out to plant some seed. As he scattered it across his field, some of the seed fell on a footpath where it was stepped on, and the birds came and ate it. Other seed fell on shallow soil among rocks. The seed began to grow quickly because the soil was shallow, but the plant soon wilted under the hot sun, and since it didn't have deep roots, it died. Other seed fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants. Still, other seed fell on fertile soil, this seed grew and produced a crop that was a hundred times as much as had been planted. When Jesus had said this, he called out, Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Yeah? Later, the disciples came to Jesus and asked what this parable meant. Jesus said, The farmer plants seed by taking God's word to others. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message, only to have Satan come at once and take it away. The seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are treated badly for believing God's word. The seed that fell among the thorns represents others who hear God's word, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the worries of this life and the desire for other things. And the seed that fell on good soil represents those who hear and accept God's word and produce a harvest of 30, 60, or even a hundred times as much as had been planted. Jesus is talking about God's word and whether we receive it. 
The first question is, are you listening? Jesus said, let anyone with ears listen. The first thing we need to do is listen to God's word. We can listen to the pastor in the sermon. You can listen to Contasini or others as they teach you at YCF. We can listen to God as we read the Bible or pray, but we need to listen. Then we have to ask if we are good soil. I know you are all familiar with planting rice as you grow your own rice at YCF. What makes it grow? Do you add anything to the soil to help it grow better? Of course, there must be water. If the field is dry, the rice won't grow. Sometimes we hear God's word, but it never goes in. We hear it, but don't really listen. This is like seed which lands on the path and is eaten by birds. At other times we listen and it goes in, but our enthusiasm wears off and we forget and God's word dies in us. This is like not having enough water. And sometimes it goes in and grows and does well, but then bad friends take us away and we forget again. This is like being choked by weeds and thorns. But if we can get through all these problems and risks, when God's word can grow in us and we can end up blessing many people, maybe 30 or 60 or 100. So what do we have to do? Keep our ears open and our hearts clear. Listen to God and not bad friends. Pray and ask God for wisdom. If we do, we will see God's work and have exciting lives as God works in and through us. I wish you all many blessings. And again, thank you so much for being here, that we can worship together and be united with each other. Amen. Amen. I don't think you want to hear me say that all again. But what I want to say to everyone is almost the same as what I said to the children. The message is really very much the same for the children of the Youth Charity Foundation as it is for all of us. God wants God's word to grow in us. He wants us to change so we can bless others and plant the seed of God's love and God's truth in others' lives. Of course, as we get older, the particular sort of weeds or thorns that will affect us changes. We get busy with other things, with work, with other activities, with the things of life. But the same basic questions remain. Do we listen to God? Are we prepared to spend time listening to God? Are we good soil? Are we something where God's word can grow in us? Do we feed or water that soil? Do we feed and water God's word by worshipping, by praying, by being thankful? Now, when you have real bad soil in your garden, you can make it into good soil or at least better soil by adding manure. Now, that's not a very nice thing to do. We don't want to add spiritual manure to our lives. But sometimes that will happen. Bad things will come into our lives. And though they can be difficult, that can be a way we can grow in faith and strength of our faith. For when we go through those difficult times, it can strengthen us. There's a well-known phrase that what doesn't kill you strengthens you. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And that's true for when God allows tests to come. Those are the times we can really grow and be strengthened in our faith. For me at the moment, God is teaching me patience. Patience because I'm waiting for my house to sell and it's been over four or five weeks now. Patience because I've just again started learning Thai and I'm struggling to say my name is Ian and the most basic and simple of things. And also, of course, patience as I'm dying to get back to Thailand to be with you all there. And I just have to be patient for the, the route, the path seems to be a long one. 
But God wants to renew and to strengthen our spiritual soil by allowing us to be sometimes tested but to grow stronger as we grow in those fruits and produce those fruits of the Spirit. When we're in hard times, we shouldn't be giving thanks for the hard times, but we should be giving thanks for the good things that we still have in our lives. We should be a thankful people. And that way God's word can grow in us and become stronger. And then we can go out and bless others. So bless you all. Remember, just as I said to the children, it applies to us all. Have listening ears. Be ready to listen to God, whether in a sermon, from your friends, from people in the church, from things completely outside the church. God can be speaking to us through that. And then let us have open hearts, ready to respond to what God is calling us to do and the way God is leading us onwards. For well, that way, God's word will grow in us and we'll know the blessing of being God's people. Amen. We say together, You, O oh God, are supreme and holy. You create our world and give us life. Your purpose overarches everything we do. You have always been with us. You are God. You, O oh God, are infinitely generous, good beyond all measure. You came to us before we came to you. You have revealed and proved your love for us in Jesus Christ, who lived and died and rose again. You are God. Amen. Amen. I'm going to mute everyone again now because we're going to sing together once more. And though when we talk, it sounds a bit noisy. If we sing and we're not muted, it sounds terrible. So we're going to sing the hymn, Now the Green Blade Rises. I don't know how many people know this hymn, but it's all about growth and the way God rises and brings growth and life into the world through Jesus.
come now to our prayers of intercession, which will be led for us this morning by Helga. Lord, you gave us a life to enjoy and a life together that we might cherish each other in the body of Christ. We beseech you not only to give us the intellects to obsess over points of doctrine, but also the hearts that are capable in your service of powerful commitment and costly love. Enlarge these our hearts, we pray, so that in choosing life in all its abundance, we may fix on the constant that is love of your Holy Trinity with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and with all our strength. And give us the grace to love our brothers and sisters in Christ as we love ourselves. Lord, help us to fix ourselves entirely on you as our goal. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, stop us in our tracks with the beauty of your world. Open our eyes to look outwards, beyond our daily preoccupations, beyond ourselves, to see the glory of all that you have made. Help us to understand that we too are a part of your creation and that the best of ourselves is also a part of all that wonder. And help us to look deep within ourselves and find there too the mystery of your art. Lord, help us to fix ourselves entirely on you as a goal. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you charge us to do your work with what we have, as far as we can and where we are. Though love and service of the people in our community is not all that you ask of us, it is a necessary part of it. Give us the gift of kindness, we pray, kind words and a kind heart. Make us good companions to others, whether our time together is to be marked by seconds or by decades. Lord, help us to fix ourselves entirely on you as our goal. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask those who suffer to repeat to themselves, and all shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. We know full well ourselves that there are moments when fear gnaws at trust. We know that the courage to say, and all shall be well, does not mean being able to avoid pain. But this too we know. All may yet be well if we face what is to come, placing all our trust in you. All may yet be well if we ask you to be with us always throughout our journey. Remembering especially Lord, we pray for our church, All Saints Chiang Mai, for its continuous, for its continuance and growth. We ask that you would open a way for Ian to return to Chiang Mai on a permanent basis. Lord, help us to fix ourselves entirely on you as our goal. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you have promised to set those who live in the Spirit free from sin and death. And we shall see unclouded and drenched in light, seeing and knowing at last in the company of that great unnumbered throng. Remembering especially
Lord, help us to fix ourselves entirely on you as our goal. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Let our prayers and praises fill your temple, O Father, as you send forth your spirit into the world to empower your children to do the deeds of your Son and to be signs of your divine presence. We pray in the name of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, O Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now we come to the time of the peace. We are more people this week than we have been for some weeks, but I think we'll still try and say the peace to each other as well and go around one by one. But first of all, I'll say to everybody, the peace of the Lord be with you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with you. you. Unmute yourselves and we'll go round and wish the peace to each other. So I'll begin with my mum. Mum, peace be with you. Peace be with you all. Bill, peace be with you. Right, peace be with you and with, with everyone. Pat Sweeney, peace be with you. Peace be with you, Ian, and peace to all of you here. Ivan, peace be with you. Peace to all. Clarice, peace be with you. She wishes us peace. We couldn't hear her. Oh, she's now there. Clarice, we can hear you. Peace, peace be with you all and with you also. Chris, peace be with you. Peace be with you all. Arthur and Phyllis, peace be with you. Peace be with you all. Nate and Muyang and Cambry, peace be with you. Peace, peace be with you all. all. Christopher, <laughs> peace be with you. Peace be with you all. Dan, peace be with you. Peace to everyone. Liz and Pete, peace be with you. Peace be with you all. Faith, peace be with you. Peace be with you all. Don, peace be with you. Peace be with you all. Helga, peace be with you. He's muted, but peace be with us. Julia and Pat, peace be with you. Peace be with you all. Children at YCF, peace be with you. <clears throat> Try that again. Peace be with you. Thank you. Mick, peace be with you. Peace be with you all. Graham, peace be with you. Peace of the Lord. William and Tante, peace be with you. Peace be with you all. Josephine, peace be with you. And peace with you all, too. Krista and Mark, peace be with you. Peace, peace be, be with, with you all. all. Christine Hall, peace be with you. We can't hear her. And anybody else? I think I've had everybody. Dan, peace be with you. I said, peace be with you all. Anybody else? Peace be with you. We have many people this morning, so I can't quite see everyone on one screen, which is wonderful. So welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Peace be with you all. And now we're going to sing again another hymn of the faith, which is a wonderful hymn, I the Lord of Sea and Sky. And it has that chorus committing ourselves to come before God. Here I am, Lord. It is I, Lord. God's call on our lives as we respond.
Amen. We now come to the time in the service when if you have bread and wine to share, get that ready as we come to our Eucharist part of the service now. The Lord is here. God's Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For Christ is your living word through whom you created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through Christ born of a woman, dying upon the cross, raised from the dead and exalted to your right hand on high, you have freed us from slavery. Through Christ you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who in the night of betrayal took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to the disciples saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, Christ took the cup and gave you thanks, giving it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, holy God, calling to mind Christ's death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for all, rejoicing in Christ's mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for Christ's coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we bring you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, and so, in the company of all the saints, we praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on Christ in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Please all receive. We say together the prayer after communion. Grant, O Lord, we beseech you, that the course of this world may be so peaceably ordered by your governance, that your church may joyfully serve you in all godly quietness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing our final hymn for this morning now, a hymn which many people know, and we have the words in Thai as well as in English, that we'll sing it in English this morning, a great hymn, The Church's One Foundation is Jesus Christ, Her Lord. passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Creator, the Redeemer and the Sustainer be with you all evermore. Amen. There were just one or two notices before I dismiss you and we have our congregational meeting. Don't forget the Wednesday lunch continues at the Gymkhana Club. That's going very well. So all our people in Chiang Mai who are available Wednesday lunchtime at 12, please go along. Then again, on Thursday, we're not having our discussion group because 
that seems to have run its course. The numbers have been getting fewer. I think people like to meet together face to face, and that's wonderful that's happening. So we won't have the discussion group this week, but we will be worshipping again, of course, together on Zoom this time next week. So that'll be the next Zoom activity that will be happening. So uh, let me dismiss you. If you want to leave, then you can do, but otherwise, please stay for our congregational meeting. It won't be very long, maybe 15 minutes, hopefully, and you'll just be able to know something of what's happening at All Saints. So let me dismiss you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>